Hello and welcome to another video from Double Rail. Uh, this is another Loco Works Wednesday video. I believe it's uh, number five. And today we're looking at King George V. This is a uh, great Western locomotive, and it's a Class 6000 or King Class. And uh, today we're going to be showing you how to basically clean it up, enhance it a little bit, and uh, get it kind of running it in tip-top condition. So this version that you're looking at is a newly acquired version for me. Um, however, it's about 35 years old or so. This is actually the uh, Lima, Italy version, so it's uh, quite old. And um, I've already uh, dismantled it and uh, I've cleaned all of the wheels, as you can probably see, as well as uh, the uh, pickups on the main chassis. And um, what I'm going to do in this video is show you basically how to enhance it. However, um, I'm actually filming this video a little bit early. Uh, I wanted to do a bit of an experiment. So today is actually Thursday. November 12th, and uh, earlier today, Hornby announced that they received their new Class 6000 King Class locomotives in stock. So everyone who pre-ordered them will probably get them over the next day or two. Uh, now, I didn't actually pre-order them. If you know anything about the uh, current modeling uh, situation with uh, the uh, Class 6000 or King Class locomotives, um, before Hornby, I think, announced them, um, Hattons and DJ Models announced that they were doing a highly detailed, very high quality, um, you know, new release uh, for them in double O scale. So I actually pre-ordered uh, two of Hattons locomotives. I, I ordered uh, King John for obvious reasons. Uh, I think that's in uh, late Bior Green. And then the second look I ordered was uh, King George VI in uh, British Railways uh, Express uh, Blue. So I'm quite looking forward for, to those uh, coming in next year. However, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to uh, kind of get my Class 6000 fix a little cheaper uh, than going and pre-ordering the Hornby version of it as well. So there was some back and forth on the forums where people thought that maybe Hornby might reuse some old tooling or the locos might not be you know that great although looking at the video that Hornby uploaded uh, to YouTube earlier this week it uh, looks pretty nice so it looks like a pretty good loco so I thought I'd do a bit of an experiment um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and fix this loco up tonight I'm going to upload this video to YouTube on the scheduler um, and I'm going to upload it um, so that it comes out for next Wednesday, the usual um, Loco Works Wednesday. But I'm also going to film another video directly after this, uh, showing this locomotive going around the layout. And all I'm going to do in the title is say that it's uh, King George V, uh, it's running number 6000, and I'm going to say it's a, a new Loco for me, which is perfectly true, it is a new logo for me. Just doesn't happen to be a new Hornby logo. So, um, I'm going to see how many people mistake it for the actual new Hornby logo. Now, you might say, well, no one's going to confuse this with the new Hornby one. So, we're going to slightly modify it to make it a little harder. So, uh, if you look at the body shell on this, and you go and you look at the website for Hornby, these are actually very, very similar. And I obviously know it's the same locomotive, so it's going to have similar attributes, but it is very similar. Um, so obviously Hornby have done a few changes. For example, this molded valve gear uh, static piece that's coming up uh, on the Hornby version is an actual part of the valve gear, while here it is molded onto the plastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint uh, this piece using the typical uh, paper clip uh, technique, kind of a steelish kind of color, and uh, that way it'll be harder to tell that this is the old Lima locomotive. And we're also going to uh, paint the front buffers here because these are obviously sprung buffers on the new Hornby version, while well, here they're just really small uh, static buffers on the old Lima version. One thing to take note though is we're looking at uh, some King uh, George V photos from the 1920s and 1930s 
and uh, I don't know if Hornby have maybe overscaled uh, these in the model version that they have. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it kind of looks like they're a little bit smaller in proportion to the rest of the locomotive in the photos, whereas Hornby's look a little bit bigger. Um, also, if you look on the front here, um, right behind the bell, uh, there's some detail here on the uh, new Hornby models. Those are painted uh, silver. They're also painted silverish kind of color on the real locos. So we're going to go and uh, paint those as well using the same technique. Um, now, the only other thing that, that's different about the uh, Lima locomotive here is this detailing here near the boiler is actually the same color as the um, body. And I looked at some photos and it does look like that's the case. So this is just a manufacturing mistake by Lima. Um, now the Hornby ones have these painted here and here the same color as a body shell. I'm just going to weather it and it'll be hard to tell um, that that's actually any different. Um, obviously on the new Hornby version uh, you have this uh, rotting here is in a much higher detail. Um, ironically it seems to have the, the same massive gap uh, between the tender and the loco. Um, so this may not actually look that out of place. Um, now there is some detailing between uh, the tender, tender and the actual loco underneath that I obviously don't have. Uh, but I'm going to angle the video in such a way that it's hard to tell that it's actually missing. Um, so to help me do all this, I'm going to be using um, some different products. So I'm going to be using uh, some Umbral Rail Color 407. Uh, this is actually a Bior yellow color, but it'll work for today. Um, I'm using that, and if you look here, there's a kind of a spot here on either side of the uh, front bogey, and that's actually uh, should be painted yellow. So I'm going to paint that yellow. And um, also, the new Hornby versions, like a lot of the other newer locos, uh, they don't have this kind of uh, metal finish. They actually have a weathered kind of darker finish. Uh, so to help out with that, I'm going to be using some acrylic flat black paint from Model Masters. But this is just any kind of flat black acrylic paint will work. I'm going to water this down and use it as a weathering technique uh, on the wheel edges here as well as on the uh, valve gear. And uh, hopefully I'll water it down enough that it won't uh, lock the valve gear. Uh, finally, I'm going to be using some uh, Tester's uh, silver paint. And I'll probably dull that down with some weathering powders. And that's going to be used, like I said, for the uh, buffers here on the front, as well as uh, this piece of molded valve gear that's on the body shell. And then uh, finally, I'm going to use uh, some Humbrol weathering powders uh, to basically weather the logo. And then uh, we'll lock in the weathering on the body shell um, and the tender with uh, some uh, testers uh, matte varnish. So hopefully I'll be able to get all this done in the next couple of hours and then we'll get that video uploaded and see what people think. Alright, so I'm going to go and start mixing up some paint and then you guys can uh, take a look. Okay, so what we've got here is a uh, bottle cap full of water and we also have a bottle cap full of acrylic paint that's got a little bit of extra water in it. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, test it out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just get the uh, paintbrush uh, a little wet here with the water. I'm holding the, uh, do the outer one here first. I'm just going to dab the paint here. <laughs> So I've gotten the uh, yellow paint out of the way, and now I've moved on to silver paint. However, 
this loco is pretty old and so what I'm going to do before I um, apply any kind of silver paint to it is I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean. So all I've got is a bit of water and a uh, piece of kitchen towel. I'm just going to dip that in the water and squeeze it out and uh, we're just done here is uh, done some uh, dry brushing on the front as well as uh, on the sides you can see uh, we've painted that uh, gearing in and so uh, next up is really to uh, make sure that this uh, still runs okay and, and reassemble it but in terms of the cosmetics uh, we've pretty much uh, sorted that out so just to give you a quick rundown of what I've done so far uh, you saw me uh, weather uh, with the acrylic paint and stick the uh, yellow dot there on either side of that. We'll let that dry and then we'll weather it. Uh, did the same technique um, with the main chassis. You can see it's uh, it's taken pretty well. It still moves, um, so that's all good. Um, I'll run over uh, the edges of the wheels with some uh, rubbing alcohol um, before this all dries. Um, but there you can see I've done some uh, dry brushing technique on the uh, sides as well uh, just to kind of enhance some of the details uh, that are molded onto the plastic so um, what I'm going to do next is let this dry and then I'm going to use this Umbral uh, smoke weathering powder which is 97920 bought this a while ago from I think Hornby here in the States um, that or I bought it from Hatton, so I'm not sure I bought it from one of them, but I've been saving it for a special occasion and I thought this little experiment was a, uh, a good one to save it for. Um, next up, I'm going to clean this motor a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do anything special to it and I'll show you what I do on the video. Uh, but basically, I'm just going to uh, lubricate it uh, right here in the center. Uh, lubricate it. There's a little bearing at the top, so I'm going to lubricate that. There's another bearing here here, here, and on the wheel axles as well. And then, uh, while this, after this is dried, I'm gonna lubricate up uh, the wheels, reassemble this, and uh, then I'm going to go in and weather it. Um, so I'm gonna go feed the cat, uh, or cats, and uh, let this stuff dry for a while, and then I'm gonna come back, and uh, what I'll do is, everything I just said I was gonna do, um, I'm gonna film, and we'll just do the usual speed up so you can see it being done but not having to sit through about 40 minutes of video. Alright, so I'm going to leave my paint uh, which is watered down here in case I want to uh, dry brush the um, the tender or you know uh, um, some of the take the paint and uh, just apply it to the paper towel until you can just sort of see that it's barely coming through and then you apply that to the to the loco and so on. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna go uh, let this dry and go feed the cats while I'm waiting. And then hopefully um, when I come back, I'll do the rest of this in a fast forward kind of fashion and uh, you'll get to see the thing on the layout. All right, so uh, so far so good, it's looking good. So hopefully when I reassemble it, it still works.
Okay, so uh, the uh, body shell has uh, gone ahead and dried. So has the uh, tender. And I uh, like the results I got with the uh, spray and the uh, umbral weathering powders. Looks like I'll have to invest in some more of them. So um, next up, I'm going to reassemble it. Um, I did use some blue tack to get that um, weight on there, and I'm going to blue tack uh, the other weight on top. So I'm going to go and reassemble this real quickly, and uh, we will go from there. So we're going to go run this on the layout and uh, hopefully uh, convince some folks that it's a uh, slightly newer logo. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.